And John, I want to go right to you because I understand you've been selling and selling a fair amount over the past few days. Yeah, Scott, um, and I, I don't know if it's really breaking news, but uh, yeah, I've cut my stock position in half, Scott. Still have uh, the option position that I described to you guys a couple weeks ago, but the combination of uh, Ms. Hagan's testimony um, to the Congress and then over in Europe, uh, as well as the fact that uh, Facebook has said that what Apple has done with their new settings um, has impacted and is likely to continue to impact Facebook's ability to offer ads of the sort that people expected. I think that continues to weigh on that stock, Scott. So um, I didn't want to own as much stock as I did, so I've continued to lighten up on that. Calls are a different story. I can risk, you know, 3 and $4 on calls rather than $330, $340 per share on the stock. So I've decided to cut the exposure to the stock dramatically. Yeah, I mean, it is breaking news for us, Doc, when what was one of your <clears throat> larger positions gets cut in half, mm -hmm. especially when we're spending time today talking about an earnings report. Now, the flip side, of course, is Stephanie Link, who just bought Facebook last Wednesday, going into the print and tells mm -hmm. us today that she is buying more stock. So you're taking the other side of Doc? I'm taking the other side of Doc. Um, look, I, I did not own this or buy this for the quarter. I bought it because numbers had come down so much and expectations had come down so much to account for the privacy changes. Everyone's going to go through this with Apple, so they're no different. But the numbers had come down. The valuation had come down to 20 times earnings, 10 times EBITDA. And I think they can grow ad, ad, their ad business 20% on a sustainable basis. Now, look, the quarter was mixed. Um, I'm going to take the positive side, 35% year-over-year revenue growth. U.S. and Canada had DAUs that grew, which was a surprise. OPEX was lower. And I think the new disclosures where they're breaking out their traditional businesses to, um, you know, some of the newer initiatives that they're, they're talking about, Metaverse in particular, I think that will get them a, a better rating, a re-rating. We saw that with Google, Microsoft, Amazon, when they disclosed more. So I think as Facebook discloses more, you'll get a higher multiple. And I think this is a great long-term growth story on sale. I mean, okay, Steph, so I'm, I'm looking, you, you say the quarter's mixed, and yes, technically it's mixed, okay? Their EPS beat, their revenues missed, their revenue outlook missed, the monthly users missed, and they met their daily user numbers. So the story was more negative than positive. I think we can objectively say that. What I want to know from you is, does this show there are finally cracks in what has been a fairly Teflon story? I don't think so, Scott. I really don't. I mean, I think I look at the U.S. and Canada seeing DAUs grow for the first time in years. That was very positive to me. I look at revenue growth growing at 35 percent year over year. That's still very respectable. And I do think expectations have come down considerably. This is a profitable company with size and scale. You want to compare this to Snap? Because Snap's not profitable, and it trades at 23 times price to sales. If you want to look at price to sales on Facebook, it's eight times. You want to look at Twitter, it's 11 times. So this is a growth story that has pulled back 15% from its highs, maybe a little bit more now. And I will continue to add to it and build out my position. I started with a small position. I, again, it wasn't for the quarter. It was because I thought there was opportunity. Growth on sale is what I like to look for on the growth side of my portfolio.